The dream match, Lita challenges Becky Lynch for Raw Women's Championship at Elimination Chamber. Ronda Rousey's back, who is she going after for Mania? Sasha Banks also returns, what's next for the boss? And Jade Cargill continues to dominate, winning yet another open challenge. Welcome everyone to Ring Bell, this is DS and this is Women's Wrestling Weekly. What a huge week of women's wrestling we had. Let's go right into Raw. Alright, we have Bianca Belair coming to squash another tag team champion. Bianca Belair versus Carmella. So last week we saw Bianca Belair defeat Zelina and this week she defeated Carmella the tag team division, right? But regardless, this was a fun match. I loved when Carmella was in the submission hold from Bianca and she would just keep going, but am I still pretty? Am I still pretty? Am I still pretty? <laughs> just another match to keep Bianca's momentum going, but I wonder if using tag champions as her fodder is really the only way to go. I guess it is, because we don't have that many roster members. I mean, we could have definitely used any of the legends from the Rumble for this match, I think. It was me. Uh, uh, good. Not bad! Second match we saw was Rhea Ripley versus Nikki A.S.H. Pretty short match, around 6 minutes. We saw some really good back and forth between them though. At the end, Nikki tries to finish Rhea off with the neck breaker, but she poses a little too long, giving the opportunity for Rhea Ripley to reverse her with the Riptide. The match itself was good, but not too noteworthy. But what I loved the most was the follow-up from the Raw talk, where Nikki is in complete denial crazy. I love this character development, is she going back to the sand? days or is she just losing it? Some people are saying this is Nikki's golem era. Winner. Winner. I want to see this continue. I'm satisfied. Alexa Bliss's therapy session continues. She's got two segments this time with not much obvious progression. The therapist gave Alexa a replica doll of Lily from WWShot.com and Alexa just reminisces her past with Lily. I'm kind of lost. Uh, and I can sit here and come up with theories, but I don't want to. <laughs> it seems like the direction is Alexa's going back to normal. She's less angry, her makeup's getting less contrasty, but if she just become normal after all these weeks of therapy, would that be a good payoff? Uh, I'm not really sure. We also saw Dana Brooke and Tamina's 24-7 segment as Dana's running around from Tamina backstage at Matt Riddle's scooter race is going on. I don't know. And to close the show, Ronda Rousey comes out to do the post Royal Rumble Classic, teasing which champion she'll challenge at WrestleMania spot. Her reasoning here isn't too bad on why she might want to challenge Charlotte. She wants to defeat Charlotte, become the champion, and put Becky and Becky's title under her shadow. I'm like, okay, I can see that. Not gonna lie, Ronda still has her presence and charisma, but her promo shows some rust here to a point I'm not sure if she wants to be here. <laughs> and then Becky Lynch then comes out in a clown-like outfit as support that she's been so experimental with their outfit lately. <laughs> she reminds Ronda that she's the only woman that ever defeated Ronda in WWE, but she'd understand if Ronda wants to eat the appetizer by going after Charlotte first. Ronda then judo throws Becky out of nowhere and teases the armbar and says she will reveal who she's challenging on Friday. I think they expected a little bit more crowd reaction for this, but it didn't happen. What made everything worse is that the day after the segment, clip got viral on Twitter where it was so obvious that the crowd reaction for Ronda's promo was edited in by WWE. It made me embarrassed watching it, probably Ronda very embarrassed. Ronda's delivery wasn't the greatest, and I thought this was a really lame ending to the Raw. And then, the music hit, with Lita entering the ring! I lost my shit when this happened, and then she comes into the ring, compliments Becky for being a fighting champion, playing mind game to have Becky accept her challenge for the Raw Women's Championship at Elimination Chamber, literally so freaking obsessed. I am so excited for this match. Lita delivered it. Her playing mind game with Becky was awesome. And Saudi Arabia, we got so used to getting all the male legends. We needed a female legend to come here and Lita is a perfect person to do it. Wow, wow, wow. I'm so stressed. The next team was jam-packed with women's action. Let's start with the Kaylee Ray and Mandy situation. Oh my god. So Toxic Attraction comes out. Gigi and JC confirm that they will be facing Indy and Persia for the Tag Team Championship match at NXT Vengeance. Kaylee Ray then comes out with the bet, demanding a title match. She reminds everyone that she's the longest reigning champion of the modern era. Mandy then boasts her accomplishments, saying that she was in ad campaigns, magazine covers, bikini world champion. And then Kaylee Ray brings up Mandy sleeping at WrestleMania and her whole relationship with Otis. Haley Ray then slaps Mandy, grabs her bat to shoot a toxic attraction away. Her craziness just started because later in the show we see Haley Ray 
abduct JC and Gigi in a car. And then even more later in the show, Kaylee Ray ambushes Mandy with a spaghetti bowl and a cake, chases her down to the ring and super kicks and gory bombs Mandy. I'm like, what has gotten into you? Someone check her hair dye. I am a bit worried about Mandy's character. It's becoming a little bit too one dimensional for me. It seemed like she had more depth when she first introduced her new brunette look, but now she's just back to doing, I'm sexy, I'm hot, I'm blonde. Oh, wait a minute, I'm Burnett. It is a little bit worrisome in that sense. Kaylee Ray looks freaking crazy. <laughs> like, what the heck is going on? What did Mandy do to deserve all this? I don't know, I'll say stratified for all the effort, but that was a lot. <laughs> Continue with the Cora Jade and Raquel storyline where Cora is trying to prove that she's tough enough to team up with her for Dusty Cup and to prove herself they're having a match. This match was all about showing Cora Jade's tenacity. By the way, Raquel looked so great with the blow up hair. Raquel looking amazing. Women handles Cora throughout this six minute match and Cora really did great showing me the shades of Beth Phoenix versus Mickey James vibes. At the end, Raquel defeats Cora with the Chingona bomb, but ultimately Cora wins Raquel's respect as Raquel shakes Cora's hand. This was a really good match. They told a great story. Stress. We saw another match Amari Miller versus Wendy Chu. And before the match, we saw Tiffany Stratton offering to take Amari Miller shopping if she defeats Wendy. Wendy's entrance with the chillaxing music, pajama, was everything. It was such a mood. I want to download the music right now. It's so good. And Wendy came prepared with more moves that kind of matches and aligns her character. And I love them. So that leg lock and then the sleeping elbow drop. And she even put Amari in a sleeper hold, which I which I freaking love. During the match, Tiffany comes out, hands Amari her black card, trying to motivate her, but it only distracts Amari. And Wendy finishes Amari with the win. I didn't really love this finish, but I'm sure this is a working process. So after the match, Tiffany asked Amari where her black card is, and Wendy apparently took it. So yeah, this was a cute match. I am excited to see even more from Wendy. People can say it's a dumb gimmick, but hey, it's winning my heart. We see backstage Persia and Indy with Dex interacting. Persia is checking Duke Hudson's Instagram and then Brooks Jansen comes in asking for relationship advice with Caden Carter. I don't know what's going on. Love is in the air. I don't get it but I don't mind it. Lastly, we see Saray versus Kayla Inray, and Saray goes from schoolgirl in the gorilla to magical girl look when she comes out in the entrance. New hair, cute gear. It wasn't exactly the transformation sequence that I wanted, but I can see that that's what they're going for. Saray defeats Kayla in a three minute match with a sunray drop kick and a sleeper suplex. I don't get the sensor move set changed much, but either way, this is something that she desperately needed. The refreshment, and I think the magical girl gimmick might be what's saving her career. Alright, AEW Dynamite time, we have a match between Layla Hirsch versus Red Velvet. This was a follow-up from last week's segment where Layla attacked Red Velvet, turning heel. And apparently Red Velvet and Layla are like the top two on the ranking system. I I still have no idea how this ranking system works. This match was fun. Red Velvet runs out from the ramp to jump on Layla to start the match. I get excited about seeing Red Velvet whenever. I wonder if she has a dance background because a lot of her moves are very dancey and very floral. Layla, now that she's healed, got a lot more grittier and grounded. I love the spot when she took off Red Velvet's arm bandage and attacked it constantly to injure her. And at the end, Layla picks up the win with the handful of tights, which I was kind of surprised with. Post-match, we see classic A spot where the heel attacks the face and then another face comes in, in this case Chris Statlander, comes out to save Red Velvet. Good match, stratosphere. After this we saw a Britt Baker segment. I don't really see the point of this segment other than to show off the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Awards. She won many apparently. Britt Baker usually is a very good promo but this one kind of came flat to me. She kind of reminded me of a stand-up comedian who came prepared with her bits and it didn't really land with the audience but she just stick with the script until the end. Even it never worked. She came prepared with a lot of insult to the city and the sports jokes, but while insulting the people of the city, she was talking straight towards the camera the whole time, and she didn't really interact with the crowd reaction at all. I don't know, this one definitely wasn't her best work. So, I'll say, girl, Mm -mm. Girl, uh-uh. Impact wrestling time. So on Impact, we saw the Influent versus the Inspiration, but not Tennille and Madison, but Madison and Caleb with the K because Tennille couldn't attend the taping this time. So this was kind of an intergender wrestling match. The match wasn't bad, but I wouldn't say this was the Inspiration's best outing. We've seen how Caleb with the K could be best used when they were feuding with Taylor Wilde. Gosh, I wonder where she's at. So Caleb was really good at basing Taylor, made her look fantastic in their feud. I think he could have done the same 
scene with Cassie and Jesse to accentuate their wrestling skills, but that didn't really happen here. We see Cassie reverse Caleb powerbomb and get the roll up pinfall victory in the pretty long 11 minute match. This match was fine, but I'm ready to see the actual match between the inspiration and the influence. I will say, me. Uh, good? Not bad! We then saw the quintessential diva Giselle Shaw teaser promo. Excited to see more about Giselle because you know I love some divas. We saw a backstage interview with Jordan Grace, the digital media champion, and it seems like they're building her feud with Matt Cardona next. Jordan says Matt Cardona was the first internet champion back when MySpace was around, and he shouldn't go cry about his eventual loss to her on Live Journal. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but. Loved it! In the ring, we saw Gail Kim welcoming Mickey James as she cuts a promo regarding her entering Royal Rumble as a Knockouts Champion. The ring was surrounded by all the Impact Knockouts, and this eventually turned into a multi-women segment, which I always love. So Deanna first interrupts Mickey, insults her, and then leaves this arena saying this is a waste of time. And then Chelsea Green comes into the ring that Mickey is Mickey freaking James. It is not if, but when she wins Royal Rumble. And then Chelsea asks if she could be the first want to challenge Mickey for the title. This was also the first taste of the storyline between Chelsea and Mickey. The rumor before was that they wanted to do a modern version of Trish Mickey storyline with Chelsea and Mickey back in WWE, and it seems like we're seeing the beginning of that super fan situation on Impact. This brings in Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans into the ring, and then cues the brawl. This is a great promo for everyone, especially Mickey James, as she's going into this historic moment walking into Royal Rumble as an Impact Knockouts Champion breaking down the forbidden door. I'm so glad that Impact is taking it very seriously and this segment felt important with all the knockouts out there. I was very stressed. Rampage time, we saw two promos, first between Thunder Rosa and Mercedes Martinez who are ready to end each other next week. And then we got a Serena D promo looking more deadly and scary week by week. And then we got a TBS title match as Jade Cargill continues her open challenge. And the challenger this time is Julia Hart with one eye. Yes, she's wearing an eye patch since getting black misted before. I don't know, I kinda like it. Uh, it seems like it's serving a good character development moment from just a naive cheerleader she was. But she was no match for Jade Cargill. Jade quickly dominates Julia Hart, ending this match in two minutes with a huge kick to Julia's face, setting up for Jaded to retain the title. Love the fighting champion Jade Cargill. She continues to look and feel like a freaking megastar. That's fine. All right, let's go to SmackDown, and SmackDown continues to be great. Surprising us this time with a huge match, Naomi versus Sonya Deville, Sonya's official in-ring return in years. And this was not a shenanigan, thankfully. This was a legit full on 12 minute long ass match and this was a storyline that was building for 153 days like Naomi says after the match and even though it was happening on a random Smackdown episode commentary was selling it like a big match and especially by the end of the match crowd was really really riled up to see Naomi whoop some of Sonya Deville, and she sure did as Naomi hit Sonya with the rear view and split-legged moonsault to pick up the clean win from Sonya Deville. I like Sonya interacting with referee before and during the match to kind of swaying him into giving the match to her, but he thankfully did not do that. And yes, Sonya wasn't her 100% from her peak days, she was slower and a bit rusty, and at some points I think she almost intentionally slowed down to keep the match at her pace. I'm sure that will change as she gets back in the ring more often because she's tremendously talented. But I'm gonna be honest, I still hate, 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 hate her move. Her signature move that she kind of looks like she's the one who's receiving the DT. You can hear the crowd is confused, even the commentary team was confused. Drop it. <laughs> Drop it! Obviously, now that we saw the Rumble, we know that the storyline will continue. Hope to see this feud escalate even more going into WrestleMania. I'm satisfied. We also saw Charlotte Flair promo talking about the Rumble. Shayna then comes out with the new music. Aaliyah comes out. Natalia does. Natalia, I, I love Natalia's part where she said she's a three time Guinness record holder, and tomorrow she'll be four. And I'm like. <laughs> Wait a minute, how? <laughs> how? And then after all this, Sasha Banks, the boss, returns to enter the Royal Rumble. And then they do their mock rumble, throwing people outside the ring. I, I love multi-women promo, like I said. This was fun, and I was legitimately surprised about Sasha's early return. So I'll say, surprise time. All right, thank you so much for this week's review. I'm actually heading to Baltimore this weekend for a Baltimore Cellafest. I'll be finally reuniting with Lita there. So I'm so, so excited about that. I might also talk to Ember Moon. Hopefully 
hopefully I'll get some interviews. Maybe we'll just set up something for the future, but wish me luck. And you can find me at DSN on Instagram and ringdelds on Twitter. I'll see you next time. Bye.